All right, so my question to you both is, as a new stylist fresh into the business, oh. I got a great opportunity assisting, which was great in the beginning. However, dynamics are shifting, stylists are leaving, and education is lacking. This would be a great opportunity to position myself for the staying power. However, without the solid training and education behind me to excel here in my career, I feel like I'll end up being a super assistant. Okay, I get it. AKA always the assistant, never the stylist. Yeah. He's actually uh, tuning in right now. Cool. cool. So, so, um, or at least there is a Jason that just says, Hey Matt, I am here. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully it's the same Jason that yeah. you just read off of. I'm assuming, but you right. know what they say about assuming. Okay. So, um, do you want to go? You can go. Yeah, I'll go first. Yeah. You know, my thought, okay. <laughs> when I first read that this morning, I was actually a little grumpy. Um, and it wasn't grumpy at Jason. I was actually grumpy at, at the people that are probably his mentors. Yeah. I feel like uh, I feel like really the problem is not necessarily mentors, but it's also a lot of times the the assistant or the apprentice. And I think it's not just our industry. I think it's um, our culture as a whole. And I think that we don't know how to mentor people. And we also don't know how to become good assistants or, or listen to to people's advice. Um, I think that just because you're a hairdresser and you own a salon doesn't mean you need to have an assistant. Um, and if you want to be an assistant or apprentice for somebody, that you should actually look at their pedigree and see if they are good enough for you to assist under. It yeah. seems like everybody wants to apprentice because really, I feel like a lot of people do things completely to um, make themselves feel better about themselves. Yeah. Like, like they do it more out of, you know, if I have a lot of assistance, that makes me gonna that's gonna make me look more successful. So it's more of a pride thing, yeah, and not necessarily a passing along kind of thing. Um, you see people open salons all the time, and they have no business whatsoever opening salons. And yeah. they would be a much better like Sola, you know, suite renter, which I I think Solas are great. I, right. I think that they definitely fulfill a need. And at first, I hated the idea of them, and now I'm like, you know. You know, sometimes people should just go open a Sola and not not damage other people. And I kind of feel like, um, if the educa if they promised you education, if they promised you all this kind of stuff, and they're not delivering it, and if they're not, if they don't really have a pedigree behind them, like if they're not, you know, somebody that you want to be like in the future, you know, you may want to look into going into. Uh, you know, apprenticing or being an apprentice for somebody else or assisting for somebody else or, you know, even, you know, going to a salon that will put you on the floor right away and then do your research. I mean, I did research. I, I, I grew up in the industry. Um, nobody apprenticed me. I, I, I mean, absolutely nobody. I, I think that I probably would have been the worst apprentice. I, <laughs> I couldn't blow dry hair. I couldn't hold hair. I was kind of a I was kind of a dick. Um, and so nobody would, would, would take me under their wing. So I really had to watch videos. And I remember watching like Sassoon videos like like for years. And I remember watching um, um, you know, all the old Paul Mitchell videos. And then and I just poured through videos and, and it was trial and error and I, I eventually became decent. Right. So it might actually just be one of those where you you go to like, you know, free salon education or what I hope to do and and you know, see if you can just get on the floor and then make up for what you don't have. It takes a little bit longer because yeah. it's like more of the school of hard knocks. So instead of going through like a four year college, you have to go through like a doctorate to get the same kind of, you know, thing. It's it's kind of the roundabout way of doing things. But I guess I'm rambling, but that's kind of, you know, my whole thought. No, I completely agree with you because I've always <laughs> been so frustrated with um what people call an assistant, what they make them do. Oh, like, yeah. Taking out the trash and washing heads all day does not teach you anything. No. You know, and I I felt lucky because I did have um, we talked about Sam Burns. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, he, great man. He, I think his lack of wanting to do some certain things like blow drying mm -hmm. and all of those things, I did all of it. So basically start to finish, I was either holding hair with mm -hmm. him or blow drying for him. And he was standing there telling me what was wrong, mm -hmm. what was right. And that to me, like really, I think took my finishing skills to, mm -hmm. you know, to where they were. And then from that point on, but like if you, a lot of salons have, shampoo people yeah like if you're a shampoo person that doesn't make you better at what you do so i think i think you're right i think that, that you need to because like in our song we don't have a system we don't have right? a system no. and um whether they like it or not it i think it makes you more attentive to your yeah. guests yeah and i found when you do have an assistant it's usually um you send the assistant to do the things you don't want to do and then you sit on your ass and be lazy yeah. the yeah. whole time yeah. so you know i never really been i get that there's a time and place for assistance um, but only if they're really helping you yeah. with the work, that, that part. And, and if, like, you know, you really need it. 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Right. But then yeah. hire them with that notion of this is your job. Yeah. You're yeah. not here to to learn and grow. You're here to shampoo because we need that. Yeah. And know? I think that like with an apprentice, like, like there's like a balance. Like I, I think I don't think necessarily think that would be like wrong to have them taking out the trash or doing the dishes and stuff like that. Right. But you can't ha- like I think a I know that a lot of like my peers said it like through going through cosmetology school, working in other salons, they would see like the tattoo shows and they'd see the apprentices or the, the assistants in tattoo shows literally doing all the grunt work and mm. stuff like that. Right. And like, but what they don't see is, is that like they're spending five hours drawing and the head tattoo artist or the owner of the shop is sitting there with them for hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Working with them on drawing, working with them on breaking down machines and yeah. stuff like that. So, like in the hair industry, like yeah, we need the same thing. Like they need to like, p- like, pave their way forward. They have to like, like yeah. do the grunt work that we've all done. But you, all, as the owner of the shop, like if you are the head stylist, like you were for uh, me, like you sat down, you said, okay, this is how you do a blow dry. This is how I want blow dries leaving my salon. Right. Um, you also sat down with cutting, taught me cutting stuff along those lines. So it's like what you guys are saying. Right. But. Well, there's also a difference yeah. between the, the, the two words. Yep. I mean, as you're talking, I'm thinking the, the difference between assistant and apprentice. Mm-hmm. An assistant is going to do my grunt work. Right. An apprentice is going to, I mean, I think of apprentice like, like you know, and I'm a little bit of a geek, but like a Jedi, right. you know, and, exactly. and they stand next to me the entire time. Yep. And I had apprentices that, you know, I, I called them my human, my human um, hair clip. Yep. You know, because they would stand next to me and hold my sections for me because I didn't want to get wrinkles with a regular clip. Mm-hmm. And so they'd hold it. And then they were able to cut hair just by watching. Yep. You know, and there's there's um the the whole Sassoon. I know Sassoon has that whole program called uh uh the Varter program, which Varter means to watch. Okay. Um and that's really their like apprentice program. And I think it's amazing because you know, you get through their Varter program and you can cut that that style. You know, where if they were an assistant to so and so, maybe they have to go pick up your dry cleaner. Right. You know? Yeah.